Now we're going to go through the protocol for lab one. Uh, lab one is the ubiquity and aseptic technique lab. What does it mean if something is ubiquitous? Um, ubiquity of microbes means microbes are everywhere. They're in the air that we breathe, in the food we eat, in the water we drink. Everything we touch is covered with microbes and microbes are covering our bodies as well. So in this lab to observe ubiquity, we're gonna do air sampling. We're going to do hand plates, body swabs, and fomite tests. Um, and we do that using TSA plates which is tryptocase soy agar plates. It's a general purpose media for growing microbes. Um, so it, it doesn't for, select for certain microbes. It's general purpose, most things can grow on it. And it has nutrients for a wide variety of, of microbes to grow. In this lab, I'm gonna show you air sampling for quality control. So there's two ways of doing air sampling. It can be active or passive. So what does that mean? Well, active sampling means forcing air into its collection me medium, like forcing air onto a Petri dish. Um, whereas passive sampling means the Petri dishes are opened and exposed to the air uh, and just left open for a certain amount of time to determine what microbes settle into it from the air. So there's pros and cons for each method. Um, for the active sampling method, um, the pro is that you can detect uh, microbes even in areas where there's a very low microbial concentration. But the con is that it requires special equipment and training um, to be able to do active um, air sampling because we need to have the equipment for forcing the air onto the collection medium. Um, whereas with passive, um, the pro is that you can have a long sampling period. You can leave the plates open as long as you want to and it's easy to do. Uh, but the con is that you could potentially miss some of the microbes that are present in the air. I'm going to be showing you exactly what we would be doing in the lab. So if you were in the lab with me, um, I, each pair of students would get one TSA plate and you would label the plate. Um, you always label on the, the side of the plate that has the auger and not on the lid and that's because the lid could get lost or switched. And you would label around the edge um, rather than directly in the center of the plate, as you can see in this picture. Um, and you would label around the edge because that makes it easier to see your samples on the plate once they grow. Um, and you should include your name, the date, and the details of what's in the plate. So if you're doing an air plate, if you put that plate in the bathroom, you could label it bathroom air plate. Um, and so you would open the plate and leave it open for at least 30 minutes in the location of your choice. Um, so even in the bathroom or outside, you, if we were in the lab, I would let you choose where you wanted to take an air sample from. Um, and you would just leave a note saying not to touch it and leave it for a certain amount of time. So here's a video of how we would do um, passive air sampling in the lab. As I said, you would write your name on the plate, and remember you would write it on the auger side of the plate, not on the lid, um, and also the date and um, the sample, whatever you're sampling. In this case, we're doing an air plate. And you would just open up the plate, take off the lid, and leave it out for 30 minutes to get a sample. The next thing we would be doing in the lab is a body swab. So our bodies all the time are covered with normal flora and various microbes. Um, so the first thing you could do would be to make a hypothesis as to whether you think your mouth swab or a hand swab would have more microbial growth and why you think that is. For the mouth swab, you would get one TSA plate per pair of students and you'd use a marker to draw a line down the center of the Petri dish. Um, Label the plate again, label it properly, um, make sure to include the body surface that you swab, and then take a sterile swab and swab around the inside of your mouth, inside the cheek, um, the teeth, under your tongue, and then um, gently swab onto your half of the auger. Um, so zigzagging and rolling the swab around onto the auger. 
This first video is to show you how to sterilely open a, a sterile swab going through the paper without touching anything. And then you would swab the inside of your mouth and streak it onto the TSA plate, being very careful not to touch anything else, and gently streak it onto the auger. Your skin is covered in microbes all the time. Um, that's why contact transmission is so common um, when we talk about coronavirus, for example. Um, but other transmissions are vehicle and vector transmissions. So vehicle transmission means a substance such as soil, water, or air, or any substance carries the infectious agent. Uh, vector transmission means a living organism carries the infectious agent to a new host. For the handprint protocol, you would have one large TSA plate per student. Um, you would label your plate with your name and the date and handprint. Um, you could remove any rings and then press your dominant hand against the auger steadily for a few seconds uh, and then remove by lifting your hand straight up so you don't smear the print. And if your whole hand wouldn't fit on the plate that we have, um, then you could do the fingertips first and then the palm. So uh, something to think about would be is if you had unlimited supplies for this experiment, how could you expand it? So you would open the plate, press your fingers onto the plate, onto the auger, and then gently lift up and then press your palm onto the auger. and then replace the lid. A fomite is an inanimate object or material that's likely to carry microbes or infectious organisms. So if you catch a microbe from a fomite, that's considered vehicle transmission. So for the fomite test, you would have a TSA plate per pair of students. You'd label the plate, draw a line down the center when you label it, um, because you're going to do a dry section and a wet uh, swab of your fomite. Um, so you would use half the auger to use a dry swab that you rub against a fomite of your choice. So you can use a pen, lipstick, cell phone, eyeglasses, the floor, any fomite that you choose. Um, and then the other half of the auger, you'd use a fresh swab that you dip in some sterile water and then swab the fomite again um, with the wet swab. And pay attention when swabbing, um, when you label the two halves of the plate and flip them over, um, the sides are now reversed. So if you label the dry side um, on the left, you make sure that that's the one you swab onto the left side. Um, and then you would bring all the plates to me if we were in the, in the laboratory to be incubated. So for the fomite test, you label your plate, with what you're testing, your name, the date. Draw a line down the center because remember we're going to do a dry side and a wet side. And the fomite we're going to test in this experiment is the marker. So you would sterilely open the swab being very careful not to touch anything. And use that dry swab to wipe along the marker. And then streak it onto the dry side of your plate. It's labeled dry. Then you'd get a fresh swab Again, open it sterilely, being careful not to touch anything. And you would wet the swab with sterile water. And now wipe the wet swab on the fomite, which is the marker, and streak it onto the side of the plate that's labeled for wet.
So those labs, um, those experiments are going to show us that microbes are just everywhere. So when we perform other experiments in the lab, we need to be thinking about avoiding contamination. So a, the word aseptic means free from contamination of microbes or sterile. So we need to keep sterile objects sterile for as long as possible. So that's done by never completely opening the Petri dishes, um, meaning hold the lid slightly open in a clamshell technique and also always closing items as soon as possible when you're done using them. Never touch your tools against the lab benches or against people and never reuse anything that's come in contact with bacteria or materials already. When dealing with bacteria in the lab, we frequently use a mixed culture. That means a culture that may consist of two or more different species. Um, but for many experiments, we want a pure culture or a single species. So we want to maintain that pure culture and have to be sure to use aseptic technique when handling the cultures to avoid introduction of other organisms. So in order to isolate an individual species, a pure culture from a mixed sample, we can use the streak plate method. And what that method does, it dilutes the culture in every quadrant of the Petri dish. So that's done by streaking the sample across an auger plate in a method where the cell density is diluted and decreases until individual cells get deposited on the auger. So it's a method of, of diluting your sample so you can have a spot on your plate where just single individual cells can grow. And those individual cells then grow into colonies. Colonies are individual macroscopic microbial growth that all grow from a single organism. So it's a, a spot on your plate that you can see with your eyes, but it's representing the growth from one single cell. In the aseptic technique experiment, each student gets their own TSA plate and each table in the lab would have a broth culture of bacteria. So you would never shake the broth um, because they're not fully sealed tubes. And you carefully label your plate, um, take one sterile disposable loop in your dominant hand and use the other hand to grab the bacterial broth culture tube. Um, and you can practice the procedure using an empty cap tube first to make sure you get it down before moving on to the actual procedure, what we would do normally in lab. Um, and that's just because it's sometimes uncomfortable at first and it's better to practice the, the technique um, when there's no risk of spilling the bacteria. So you would remove the cap of the culture with the little finger of your loop hand by pulling the tube away with the non-loop hand. And I'll show you this in the video. Um, you hold the cap in your little finger during uh, the bacterial transfer. Then hold the culture tube at an angle and move the tube, not the loop, until the loop is submerged in the bacterial broth. And then you gently stir, since the bacteria tend to settle in the tube. You remove the loop by once again pulling the tube away instead of moving the loop. Um, and make sure not to hit the loop on the edges of the tube. And you'll see a film on the loop, like when you blow bubbles and you see the film. Um, so you can see that there's liquid there in the loop. And then using your non-loop hand, you place the tube into its cap and return the cap tube to its rack. You do not shake the loop. Um, you would enter gently enter the clamshell opened plate. Just open the plate very slightly, keeping the lid over it, and gently streak um, following the pictures below. So meaning that the loop is not too straight up and vertical, um, but also not too flat on the auger. You want to have it at uh, a little bit of an angle when you streak that loop onto the plate. We would be using plastic loops in this um, lab. So um, you would never put the plastic loops in the flame. Only metal loops go into a Bunsen burner flame. Um, so you would go with the loop 
go directly to quadrant one of the plate and streak it on a plate uh, in this manner shown in the picture. And then you throw away that disposable loop and use a fresh one to streak a little bit from quadrant one and spread it out into quadrant two. Then you keep that same loop and spread a little bit from quadrant two out into quadrant three. And then finally, using the same loop again, streak a little bit from quadrant three out into quadrant four so you can spread it out as much as possible. Um, and you never uh, let the loop leave the clamshell covered zone of your plate. So you loosen the cap of your bacterial broth that's there in the rack and take a sterile loop from the package, being very careful not to touch anything with the loop. Now use your, your pinky finger to remove the cap and dip the loop into the culture, gently stirring it. Move the tube away, and you'll see there's a little bit of liquid there on the loop. Now you're going to use that quadrant method. So gently open the plate with the clamshell technique, keeping the lid over it, and you streak the first quadrant. So that's the most densely populated quadrant on the plate. And now you want to dilute that and spread those bacterial cells out so we can get some single individual colonies growing. So you take a fresh loop and take a little bit from where that quadrant one was and spread it out onto quadrant two. Rotate it and spread out from quadrant two a little bit onto quadrant three. Again, rotate and spread from quadrant three onto quadrant four. So we're diluting the sample and spreading it out as much as possible so you can get single cells grown. And then if we were in the lab, you would bring the plates to me um, to be incubated with the rest of the plates and always clean up the bench, the lab bench at the end of every experiment. You would do that by spraying with some bleach and wiping down the bench um, and organizing all your supplies and place your waste in the little waste basket that's at the center of each bench. Um, and we reuse the bacteria. And remember, gloves go in the red waste container by the lab door. And one more video just to show you how you'd be cleaning up the lab bench with some bleach before you leave for the day.